Hey guys, HTV here and welcome to a brand new video. Today we've got something really cool to cover because over the past couple of days, Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee's kind of like beta or just early designs of it have been leaked and are still getting leaked as of right now. It's all on this one thread on Twitter. I'll link it in the description down below. Just want to make it adamantly clear that I am not leaking this information. I'm just reporting on it, which you're allowed to do, as well as the thread as well. They are not leaking it. They are also just reporting it. Just wanted to make that evidently clear. But if you're excited for the video, drop a like down below. Let's try and hit 500 likes. Leave a comment. Did you like Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee? Are you wanting another one to happen? Let me know what you guys have to say and subscribe if you're brand new. We do daily Pokemon content on this channel. With all of that out of the way though, let's get into the video and I really hope that you enjoy. So starting things off, this is the Twitter thread uh, by Lutu, uh, goes by the at Lutube. Again, these are not being leaked by Lutu. It is uh, simply just someone reporting on it and just conveniently putting it all in one thread but of course this will be linked in the description down below if you do want to go check it out yourself it's still getting stuff added to it i think they started posting about this on the 25th of december so christmas day still stuff being added to it so i'm sure more will get put onto it i'm just reporting on it now just simply because there's a lot of stuff to go over anyway it says an anonymous poster has leaked some prototype files on 4chan's pokemon board this thread will document what has been discovered by the community so far. Uh, so the boot ROM for the Nintendo Switch dated 2017, a file called beluga.nsp in an Eevee folder, let's go Pikachu and Eevee protos lightly. So beluga, if you remember way back when, was like a leak that came out and no one really knew what it was, but obviously it was just the original file name for let's go Pikachu and let's go Eevee. And then we have here, I'm thinking one of the beta title screens or something we have the pokemon go logo there which is really cool we have the female protagonist there with pikachu but it does look really good to be fair i'm a fan of that i do like it anyway it says important note to all sides reporting on this i do not have access to the leak nor did i release it uh again like i just said they're not leaking it i'm not leaking it we're just reporting on it we're just talking about what you're allowed to do uh the image for the first post of this thread was from the sword and shield leak of october 2020 100 confirmed let's go eevee at this point uses a prototype icon also it's related to wacko's hack of nintendo dubbed the giga leak uh which is obviously just the the peak uh, the ev symbol then it says prototype icon looks similar to the e3 demo icon Code names for Meltan and Melmetal. Beta icons to know uh, where this purple one is in the final. Prototype icons for the player. Image not by me. So there's the folders. Uh, then we have the beta or the demo or whatever. And then we have these icons here. I don't think this was in the final game. I'm not sure. And then we have this as well. I don't think this was a thing where you got to choose on the left and the right. I'm not actually sure. I haven't played Let's Go Pikachu in a while. So I'm not actually too sure. My mind's a bit fuzzled about it. But uh, yeah, we have that bit there. Then it says low quality icon leftovers from Auras, including a big hand. Go Park files are present. The aforementioned uh, icons, still only the whole Kanto decks, 153. It's obviously 153 because Meltan and Melmetal were in it, um, which is why it's got an extra two um, numbers in it. But obviously these are the Auras uh, symbols here. You can see that. And then we have this, which I really do like. I love these kind of like uh, character pictures really really cool anyway it says the beta tutorial streams for your first catch there are way more than these but they're obviously different from the final lots and lots of changes to the music that are uh, being uploaded now but i cannot do that for obvious reasons looking like made and it was microsoft paint or something uh these are obviously <laughs> very early designs of catching a pokemon uh this is new gen 9 pokemon by the way he's gonna be the starter watch this space he's gonna be star in gen 9 uh <laughs> Glad my Switch don't look like that. Though. Bloody hell, those buttons are all over the place. There he is again, though, having a great time. I'll tell you what, Gen 9 Pokemon right there, they're doing it on the sly. Then we have Beta Credit Assets, all of which are very early. They're so cute. Eevee is just a recolored Pikachu, though, and the female protagonist doesn't have an early icon. So we have this, which I don't know what this is. Looking like grass or something. Uh, but then we have this, which I really, really love. I really like this Pikachu picture. I'm a big fan of this. And then obviously we have Eevee, which obviously was just another Pikachu uh, early on. Uh, but then we have this as well. I really, use, I, wish, I really wish they used this as a, like a menu icon or something. Because they're so like, I don't know. I just love the art style. I think they're really, really cool. But yeah, they were originally supposed to be used as like beta credits or something. Uh, anyway, it then goes on to say beta title screen for Let's Go Eevee lol. A bunch of non-Kanto Pokemon have no data and appear as Marowak. 
Mega Rayquaza is in the game with HD and remade textures as a placeholder Pokemon, renders of everything on the beta title screen that we've already seen. So this was the original title screen for Let's Go Eevee. Um, I'm glad they changed it. It doesn't look that good, to be fair, in my opinion. Uh, and then obviously we have a level one Mega Blastoise, but then obviously we have Chikorita up here being a level one, which is just for whatever reason a Marowak. I don't know why it got turned into a Marowak. I, I don't know why that was the Pokemon, but it is what it is. And then obviously this is the Mega Rayquaza kind of assets or whatever. And then we have the female protagonist here, which uh, again, really, really cool artwork there. Uh, and then we have date of the build is May 12, 2018. Predates released by six months. People are discovering music, but very, very slowly since there's a lot of it. Here's an extremely early rendition of the champion theme. No idea if the final version is in the build. Not sure if I'm allowed to play this or not. Uh, like I say, it'll just be linked in the description on this thread. So if you want to go listen to it, like I say, you should check this thread out anyway, because I'm sure more stuff will get added to it over the following days. Like they're still discovering stuff now. Um, the only reason I'm making this video now is because there's a lot of information to cover already. Uh, but yeah, then we got another one as well. It says a seemingly unused theme is in the game. It's obviously very familiar, but we uh, don't know where it's used in the final build of the game or was likely scrapped quite early though. Uh, and then we have some really cool stuff here. So it says the introduction is completely different towards the end. The player wakes up with a Pikachu doll in bed as opposed to the final game. Fourth picture is the final for a frame of reference. No CGI intro. So we have this is what we got um, in the end, which is obviously like you're just looking at the TV screen and then you kind of like look behind you and stuff. So that's what we got. But originally uh, we were supposed to get this, uh, which is uh, really, really cool. So obviously we have you waking up with a Pikachu, uh, Pikachu doll there, uh, which is I kind of would have preferred this intro. I don't know, just waking up in the morning with a Pikachu doll. I don't know, I just I think it's better. And then obviously getting up out of bed with the Pikachu doll. I personally would have preferred that. Um, really, I love that Nita Reno picture in the top though with uh, Gengar. That's a that's a throwback, and then obviously the map there and stuff. I don't even know what that map that's a map of. It's not Kanto, so I don't know what that is. Um, is it Kanto? Maybe it is Kanto. Maybe it is. I don't know. I don't know like Kanto. Uh, but yeah, this is obviously what we got in the end, unfortunately. Anyway, it says water doesn't animate at all. Eevee is missing from the cutscene and the save screen. <laughs> Prototype map likely has differences from the final. No transition into our battles, just a glorified fade. Um, so yeah, no water animation there. The water is moving gently, it's not. And then <laughs> we have invisible Eevee there, which is interesting. Uh, no shadow of it or anything like that. Uh, and then Habitat Unknown, and then obviously we have <laughs> no Eevee there or Pikachu or anything like that. And it says, NPC placements are outright gone or vastly different. Also, many NPCs have different text that isn't in the final. Pokemon appear to be less frequent on screen at once. Wrong music here plays Viridian Forest theme. Items appear to be non-interactable. Um, so yeah, no NPC there. Um, and then, yeah, some more stuff here. Sis uh, says Pokemon will like if you treat them nicely. Again... Just more pictures, can't interact with the items, nothing like that. And it says, when a wild battle ends, all of the wild Pokemon on the screen before you enter the battle disappear, but only occasionally. Experience uh, multipliers are broken, end of battle party screen is different, catch combos do exist, but they aren't shown in battle and only afterwards. Uh, so again, just pictures of what uh, they were just talking about. Um, <laughs> Eevee doing there, what is going on? What is going on? A very finished looking loading screen gift that isn't found at all in the final from what I can tell. Certain menu sound effects also use X and Y noises. Um, so yeah, that's interesting. Uh, and then we have HP depletes in chunks as opposed to a smooth decline. Mentions the XP dot shear when you gain experience in battle. Learns double kick at 7 uh, versus 10 in the final. Stands to reason that many of the Pokemon have different level of sets. Viridian Forest camera is broken. Um, I guess it's just a little bit more zoomed in than it should have been. So we have that. And then the trainer placement is completely different from the final. Turns out you can pick up items, but not a lot of them are finished, I guess. Beedrill Rare Spawn seems to be a lot more important. Um, I don't think you could find a Beedrill Rare Spawn in a, originally in Viridian Forest. I'm pretty sure it's just a Butterfree, right? But apparently you can find a Beedrill in this version. I don't know. Uh, using Corp in dock mode allows for full camera controls for some reason. Although Corp itself doesn't work. B resets the camera. 100% debugging tool early on. That would have been really cool. Being able to change the camera. That would have been so sick. Oh my god. Uh, the game runs traditionally docked with a Switch Pro controller, just like Sword and Shield. Uh, catch combos persist over time. They build up even if you turn off the game or start catching a different Pokemon. A coach trainer that is usually on Route 3 is at the end of Viridian City for some reason. Uh, experience bar doesn't move in battle. No pewter gym battle. No slowpoke lady. Forgot about the slowpoke lady. You're supposed to meet Red in Pewter City with Blue. He has no lines, but Blue references as, as if he's right next to him. You don't get Pokeballs for wins against trainers. 
trainers can see you in unintended places. Magikarp guy's here, I guess. So, see, uh, so he says, see what I tell you, Red. I'm always right. So, yeah, it acts like he should have been right next to you, which would have been cool. Would have been cool to see Red in QSC. That would have been awesome. And it says, test area has been found. Future City seems to be the same. Has cut scenes, but can't interact with NPCs. Cinnabar has a working mansion, but no gym. If anyone wants to test in counter tables, now uh, might be the time. So, uh, yeah, I think this is just like the test place or something like that. And then dream playing Pokemon. Oh my god, look at all the shinies. <laughs> Man. <laughs> look at them shinies. Elite 4 members are bug text wise, but they are fully fightable and like Brock was more test maps. So then we got Lorelei there and then <laughs> just of, of the squad. <laughs> just just mad. I guess this proves it. The game started off with a heavily modified Fire Red Leaf Green script as reference, also more test maps. Uh, this gym is great, it's full of women, um, which obviously is what it had in Fire Red Leaf Green. Collision with the 70. Bloody hell, what are you doing, Fast Road? Collision with the 70. What do you want about me? All gyms seem to be accounted for, but most don't have warps uh, programmed yet. Found a warp called Safari. There are no warps here since Go Park is in the game. This implies that they cut the Safari Zone very early. Water seems to be animated in some areas. Birds are present. Um, Articuno's doesn't work, but Zapdos and Moltres are fully intractable with their cutscene. Firebird also has an egg there for some reason. Oh, yeah. Why is there an egg down there? <laughs> That's random. Um, Mewtwo cutscene is identical to the original and the battle works as intended. Uh, no green cutscene programmed after Mewtwo is defeated. Also, I'm 99% sure breeding and eggs were planned for Let's Go, but cut after this NPC in the test area. I'm a Pokemon nursery lady. Uh, lately, for some reason, I see Pokemon holding eggs. It's mysterious, isn't it? If you want us to take care of your Pokemon, please speak to my sister inside the building. So we're supposed to have breeding in Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. That pretty much confirms it. There wouldn't be a woman there saying that. Um... Which sucks. I would have liked to have seen that. From further experimentation with the debug menu, it seems that there was a cut event for the story involving the chase of the fossils in Mount Moon right after you met Blue and Red, but that data has been wiped. Choosing part three out, uh, right, crashes the game. Uh, then it says, it also appears the games were made for uh, far easier for the final release. Giovanni's whole team was seven levels higher than the final, whereas Lancer's got lowered by five on launch. Today, uh, towards the middle of the game, some trainers like Sabrina have less Pokemon. Oh, why was it made so easy then? I don't understand. Uh, but then I guess they just go more over uh, the stuff. So a lot of interesting stuff that we were supposed to get. So we we're supposed to get breeding. Red was supposed to be uh, there in um, uh, Pewter. Uh, the camera could have been changed maybe. That would have been really insane. Um, obviously the title screen there. But yeah, kind of a crazy uh, stuff that we missed out on. I don't know. I, I definitely would have loved breeding to be in the game. I would have loved Red to be in Pewter. I would have loved this intro more. Is what it is. Unfortunately, we uh, we didn't get in that in the final game, but uh, it's really cool to see what we could have done. But like I say, uh, this will all be linked in the description down below if you do want to check it all out. I definitely advise you to. I'm sure they'll add more stuff to it. But uh, again, I'm not leaking it. Just talking about it. Same as Loot Tube. That's going to be everything for the, this video, though. If you guys did enjoy it, drop a like down below. Leave a comment. Subscribe if you're brand new. That's everything from me. Have a fantastic rest of your day. And until next time, peace.